today, Dragon Breath Mead. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying Brew. And I didn't know she was going to do that, I promise. I really had no idea. You never know what the Derica's going to do. <laughs> but today we're making Dragon Breath Mead. And it's a mead, but it's got Dragon Breath. But not like the nasty stuff in the morning. It's, it's different than that. What this comes out of is we recently did Dragon's Blood Wine, and it was very popular, and a lot of people wanted to know if we could make a mead from it. And I thought... Well, sure. And somebody said, well, see, dragon stuff would be spicy to me. So I thought, well, sure. We've done a capsicumel, and now we made dragon blood wine, so mix them together, and you get dragon breath meat. We so also did an accidental capsicumel where we cross-contaminated a yeah. elderberry mead. We won't go into the details on it. <laughs> but it turned out it was awesome. so wonderful. Really, really good. We still have some, actually. That, yeah. We're, we're looking yeah, forward to so this. So fruity. It'll be sweet and fruity and spicy. But one thing I want to point out, and somebody's going to get mad at me right now, is I'm going to use two jalapenos in this. I'm also going to use three pounds of mixed berries, which is blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries. It came from Publix. It's, it's you know, they're frozen. So that way they break up really nice and easy. But somebody's going to get angry with me or say, oh, you should have used this, you should have used that. I'm using two jalapenos. Why? Because I don't want the spice to be all you taste. I actually want this to be balanced. And when I made things a little more spicy, I used a habanero in a capsicumel, it was overly spicy to me. It wasn't enjoyable. You didn't get the honey, you didn't get all the nuance. All I got was heat. The first capsicumel I ever made, I used two jalapenos in it. It came out so amazingly good. It was nice and sweet. It had heat, but the heat went away. It was wonderful. That's what I'm looking for with this. So I started to hint at it already. The things that you're gonna need for this are about three quarters of a gallon of water, three pounds of honey. We happen to be using Sweet Squeeze. It's a Florida honey. It's a wildflower. We use it all the time. Um, I love this stuff. We get it from Amazon. We have links in the description below if you want to do that. We're using two jalapenos from our own garden. That's the other reason I'm using jalapenos, because I like them and we grow them. And if somebody tries to tell me that this is a sweet pepper, no, I'm sorry, you are wrong. <laughs> it is not a sweet pepper. <sighs> Trust me, the comments get crazy sometimes. Anyway, so you- We're out using uh, Lavin 71B and a cup of black tea. Yes, now, if you're wondering why the black tea, it does a couple of things. First, it adds the tannic mouthfeel that we want because I know that the berries and the jalapenos don't really have a whole lot of tannins in them. They might have some decent nutrient for the yeast, but they don't really have something that adds that little bit of mouthfeel to it. Generally, when something comes out really sweet, and this is gonna end up probably being sweet, I'll show you how, you want a little bit more mouthfeel to balance that back, but the sweet and the heat together, it's a really nice combination. Um, anyway, so let's get started. So to start off, we prepped our frozen berries by cooking them slightly, and you can see that here. So here is our mass of berries, and it's really just all the berries put into a pot. I added, I mean, maybe a half teaspoon of sugar to it just to help macerate them. And I put them on pretty low heat for maybe half an hour or so. Then I took a potato masher and mashed them up. And we get this nice slurry of the fruit. Now this is going to have all of the uh, skins and seeds and everything, so this is plenty for the yeast to work on and should be really, really great in our meat. And the next thing that we want to do, as always, is we want to hydrate our yeast. So for that, I'm going to get a little bit of water. Not too much, just, you know, something like that, eh, maybe even a little bit more. Okay, so we get a little bit of water in the cup. This is my world-famous self-stirring cup. It's also known as the replacement cup to a... Magic bullet. Magic bullet little blender thing. It has ribs on the inside, so when you do this, you can hear that. It swirls around and mixes everything up. As she said, Lalvin 71B yeast. This is a 14% ABV yeast. To me, that's the sweet spot for meads. It also is known for bringing out fruity esters. And we just bought 10 packs of it, so I'm using it. However, I'm going to go with my rule. 
when I'm making two gallons or less, I do half a packet. When I make more than two gallons, I use a whole packet. I'm just going to eyeball it. We're making a gallon today, roughly, so I'm going to use half a packet. What am I going to do with the rest of this? I'm going to fold it up and put a piece of tape. Well, Derek is going to do it. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on it to seal it up, and it's going to go in the refrigerator. Because if I just left this sitting out, this stuff would be dead in no time. Now that it's been opened, sealed, apparently they can last a lot longer because they're vacuum packed and all that kind of stuff. But better safe than sorry. Keep it refrigerated. I even keep the whole packs refrigerated all the time. The second we get them in the fridge. Okay. And then I'm just going to mix this up. Not too complicated or anything, just nice and simple, just like that. You want it to stir through. Then comes the hardest part. You have to put all the stuff into a bucket. So let's start with, uh, you know what? Let's start with some jalapenos. Why not? To cut them, I'm just going to go half here, half here, and then chop off the stem and hope that it comes apart. Seeds and all going in. Not really worried about it. Just gonna same thing over here. And I'm leaving them large on purpose because that's how I did it the first time. And I want to replicate the experience that I had the very first time I made this. Then comes the messier part. So we have our jalapenos in there, right? Now we gotta get the fruit in there. I'm, I'm tempted to just eat this. <laughs> it's that good. So let's move this out of the way a little bit, pull this guy in here, and uh, I'm gonna see, tip it, tip it towards me. There we go. We learned the last time when I covered her in berry juice Oh, Yum. nothing wrong with that. Now, before anybody freaks out that I tasted that, I washed my hand afterwards, okay? But what I also was doing is it's a good idea to taste things as you go. It's kind of like when you're cooking. I just learned, wow, that fruit isn't all that sweet. It's good, it's really good, but it's not very sweet, which means there's probably not a lot of fermentable sugars in there. The strawberries and the berries are kind of tart. So it's gonna make this interesting. I may want to over-sweeten this more than I thought, so that I can get a sweet fruit. Mm -hmm. See, that's why it's good to taste things. Otherwise you're surprised at the end. So this is warm. I measured the temperature at like 117 before I poured it in there. I'm gonna be putting the honey in. I'm gonna be putting water in. It'll get down to below the 100 degree mark that I like to ferment at soon. What I'm gonna do is get my scale, put that on there. I gotta convert it to pounds here because how I know how to do the honey. So I was going to use three pounds. Now I'm going to use three and a half. I want to give this a little bit more so I go beyond the 14% of the Lalvin 71B. So here goes. All right, so we got our three and a half pounds of honey and our fruit and our jalapenos in here. The rest is some mixing. Also, I want to, at this point, throw in the tea. Now I took the tea bag out. It just, this is regular black tea steeped at 190 degrees. I'll put the Celsius there because I can never remember it. And it's steeped for uh, maybe 10 minutes or so before I took it out. It's still quite warm, but that's okay. Cause like I said, everything's gonna cool down when I start adding water. I'm just gonna pour that in and apparently spill part of it outside. I'm gonna start mixing this together. The fact that it's all warm will make the honey a little easier to mix. Now, something that I'm starting to realize, this is very thick. This is very thick. As you can see, it's like goopy soup in there. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. So a true reading is gonna be difficult, but I know what I put in there. So I know it should be somewhere around like a, an 1100, 1 1.100 or so uh, reading, maybe even a little higher, between 1.100 and 1.120, uh, somewhere in that range, okay? That's what we're... Now that we have that more or less mixed through, 
Yep, it seems like the honey is more or less, you know, congealed. We're gonna add some water. Now, if I look at this bucket, it's to about there. This is a two gallon bucket. Almost one gallon of this is fruit mash. Now there's a, there's a bit of water in here too. So what I'm gonna do is add three quarters of a gallon of water. Now, if you're wondering why I'm doing that, I like one gallon batches. I just do. I like aging in the one gallon carboys. I've begun using plastic buckets for a lot of things that have whole fruits because that way I don't lose all that mass, okay? Right now we have almost half a gallon taken up just with the mass that's actually gonna come out. So if I did this in a one gallon container, I'd have half a gallon of brew left. That doesn't really work for me. So instead, I'm gonna add three quarters of a gallon of water, which might be a little bit overkill right now, but we'll find out. Now there's a lot of fruit salads in here. I'm gonna go with it. It's about three, get three quarters of a gallon. I didn't actually measure three quarters of a gallon. I just said, oh, this is a one gallon pitcher, about there, three quarters. Yeah, about that much. That's about all you need. <laughs> now I gotta mix this through. This is the really important step. It's not gonna go anywhere. <laughs> it's heavy. The fruits, everything in here is all going to float. They, some of it will fall to the bottom eventually as it becomes consumed by water. Um, don't worry about it, okay? As CO2 is produced from the fermentation process, it'll prevent it from rotting or molding or anything that people worry about. However, one thing that you do want to do with something like this is after about two to three weeks, you do want to do a, what I call a rough rack where you pour it through a colander or some sort of netting to get rid of most of the big solids. We don't worry about all of it because you're still in primary fermentation so we don't want to kill the fermentation we don't want to fully rack and have to build a whole new colony we want to let it keep going but without all that extra stuff okay right now this smells awesome i mean this is amazing all right so that can go away and it cooled down right now it's not even it, it's like warm room temperature at most so i am going to actually pitch my yeast you want, did the tea go in yet? Yeah, tea's already in. Oh, okay. I'm going to pitch my yeast. And somebody's going to ask why I pitch the yeast before I take a reading. It's because there's enough dil dilution in there with the extra water to change that reading. So I want to be as accurate as I can. Now that I added that, I'm going to stir it around a little bit. By the way, all this stuff has been sanitized in. The red bucket! So I'm mixing that up just a little bit, and we're gonna use our new trick. Just take a little sieve and stick it in there, and that way you only get liquid, no solids. Doesn't clog up the turkey baster, even though it did. <laughs> I think my turkey baster is nearing its end. It doesn't, it doesn't suck up as well as it used to. So we have our sample, gonna drop the hydrometer in, give that a little spin to get the bubbles off of it, and let's see where it lands. Well, not too bad. 1.104. Okay, that tells me that this could probably, if it went dry, probably be about somewhere in the 12% range, something like that. So that's okay because I have a feeling I'm gonna end up back sweetening this, okay? And what that means is just adding more honey or sweetening of some kind later on. I might even add fruit juice to this one. We're gonna to have to wait and see. This is where the art of brewing starts coming into play. I don't really know how strong this is gonna be yet because those peppers might be really strong, they might be not so strong. I already said I didn't think the fruit was super sweet, so we may have to balance the sweetness of the fruit with more honey but all of those things have to come into play. So we'll see what this does, then we'll make adjustments as necessary, okay? So for now, let's put a lid on this and an airlock. Also, what you wanna do is once you have this set, 
you want to give it a shake, maybe a stir every couple of days. I used to be really against doing that. I'm not anymore. I actually find that that's more effective. So I started doing it. I didn't do it before because, well, I'm lazy. Okay. Do you have to? No, you do not have to. Don't let someone tell you that, oh, it won't work if you don't. No, that's not true. It actually speeds up the process just a little bit and it gets rid of some of the gases. So it lets the yeast work a little bit easier, that sort of thing. When you're working with the whole fruit like this, it does let the cap go down into the, the liquid more, probably gets out a little bit more sugars. Something else about sugars. There's probably a lot of sugars in that fruit that has not gone into solution yet. So that 1.104 reading might be kind of low. It might actually be, you know, as much as 20 points higher. But for now, I'm just gonna put on my lid. And we have an airlock filled with sanitizer water. You can also use alcohol like a vodka or a super cheap scotch like the one that I got that I hate. Um, the reason you want to use something like an alcohol or a sanitizer water is you literally want to kill any bugs that try to get through there. If you use just regular water, some of them can swim through that and get right into your thing and one bug probably won't ruin the batch, but it's kind of gross. I mean, who wants that, right? So how long is this going to take? I'm going to let it go probably three weeks, like I said, then we'll do a rough rack after that. I'm not sure. This is going to be a work in progress and I'll show you as we go. We'll do extra videos to uh, let it go. But if you like this video, give us a like. If you like what we're doing here and want to see more, hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, I was told by some people over at YouTube that you're going to get notified when we put out a new video. And if you want to support the channel and you like what we're doing, you want to be a part of it and be a little more of an insider, you can join us in our VIP club on Facebook. But to get there, you have to join through Patreon. We do have links below. And in there, we share videos. We comment on things. People ask questions. It's formed a really nice little community. We love it. It's awesome. But as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a great day.